Um, so like I mentioned before, if we have this inverse square law, the relationship between our apparent brightness, B in the equation we were just looking at, uh, we could either use this apparent brightness, which we can measure to calculate the luminosity if we know the distance, or we can calculate the distance if we know the luminosity. And we might, you know, we want to know both of those things about stars. So we actually have to apply this equation twice to get um, these two uh, numbers. Uh, so one, of, you know, one thing we could do is just measure the distance of a star using parallax, right? Like we talked about last week, and then we could calculate the luminosity. But we can't measure all the distances of stars with parallax because the parallax of most stars are so small that they're really hard to detect. Um, even as we see with some with the Gaia telescope, there are some stars whose parallax cannot be measured. So we need a different way. And in order to measure distance, that means that we need an independent way to measure the luminosity of stars so that we can calculate it, the distance. Okay, so the way that we can do this is by using variable stars. Uh, and these were first measured um, sometime in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. What a variable star is, is a star that gets brighter and dimmer over time. So their brightness is variable. And uh, this is illustrated here by a graph of magnitude versus time. And you can see that the magnitude of this star is fluctuating over the course of several days. So here there's like a couple weeks maybe. And the uh, period is the time between the brightest points or the dimmest points. Uh, so you could measure it between the two brightest points or the two dimmest points in it in this light curve. This is in general called a light curve. So let me ask you just looking at this graph, what would you say is the period of this variable star? And I'm seeing the most votes for B that the period of this variable star is six days. And that's right. So I thought it was most convenient to measure from the minimum uh, brightness to the next minimum brightness, because that's the one that was closest to my axis here. And one minimum appears to be around seven days, and the next minimum doesn't occur until almost day 13. So that's approximately a six day period. All right, so using how do we even use this period of a variable star? Um, well, the discoverer of a very important relationship uh, is this person, Henrietta Swan Lovett. Uh, she was uh, one of what are called the Harvard computers. This was a team of women who cataloged stars by hand at the Harvard Observatory. Um, they were called computers not in a derogatory way, but because they were doing computations at a time when computers did not exist. So they were computing things. Uh, and what she studied were stars, uh, variable stars within star clusters. So in a star cluster like M4, um, all of those stars are at roughly the same distance from us. And so the distance variable is no longer uh, a factor in this equation when we compare their brightnesses. And so when we look at differences in their apparent brightness, we're looking at differences in their luminosity directly. Um, and this, since we're looking at just comparisons, we can get comparisons of their luminosity just by looking at their apparent brightness. And what Henrietta Swan Lovett was able to discover was that the period of a Cepheid variable star, this particular type of star that acts this way, uh, is directly related to its luminosity. Uh, because the brightest stars that she noticed, the brightest variable stars, invariably had longer periods. So this was really handy because it meant that if you could measure the period of a star, you could directly read off of it, its luminosity. Um, this wasn't exactly possible when she was doing this research because they did not yet have numbers on this axis, essentially, on this luminosity axis. So astronomers had to calibrate the luminosities by calculating the distance in a different way, uh, which we'll discuss later in the term. However, once this uh, was done, once this uh, y-axis was calibrated, then this period luminosity relationship became a way to get the luminosity directly and this then became one of the best ways to measure past the distance limits we have from the limited uh, method of parallax. My question for you is, what else do we need to know in addition to the period of a star in order to get the distance from this relationship? Yep, exactly, apparent brightness. So if we go back to our, sorry, 
our relationship between apparent brightness, luminosity, and distance. If we can measure the period of a variable star, then that gives us the luminosity directly. Then if we also measure its apparent brightness, we can calculate our unknown, which is distance. All right, so the, the relationship between these three quantities means that if we know two, then we can get the last one. So if we know luminosity and apparent brightness, then we can calculate distance. So this is the um, uh, you know, critical application of this idea. And this, this period luminosity relationship was a really big deal in astronomy because this was one of the first ways that we could measure distances on scales that were more on the size of galaxies, on the scale of galaxies, rather than just uh, measuring the distances to very nearby stars.